Uh, nice to meet you, all of you, on our TechCore user group Belarus. And uh, today I'm going to present my new topic, uh, which is about uh, multi site solutions implemented in SiteCore XM Cloud. And uh, we're so we will look at different approaches to build them and uh, compare. And actually, we will look at the pros and cons of different approaches. And uh, let me start with the short introduction of myself. Uh, I have more than 13 years of programming experience, primarily in the backend part. So since April 2012, I work for Bremit and uh, currently take a position of the solution architect. Uh, I have almost 13 years of experience in Sitecore and the I was awarded as a core technology MVP for seven times in a row, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, talking about my hobby for the a few last years, I fall fell in love with the yachting, obtained some different licenses, and now uh, a few times in a year, I organize some weekly trips on yachts and catamarans with my family and friends. And I think somebody of the uh, tendency already was with me on these kind of trips, but uh, let's go further with the main part of the presentation. Uh, I think everybody already heard about uh, the XM Cloud, but uh, even uh, somebody was had experience to work with that. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna say a few words and identify what is actually the XM Cloud, and it is first of all this is the Cloud version of SetCore Experience Manager, also calling as uh, XM. And uh, uh, basically, this is the cloud based content management system. And being a content management system, uh, it allows us to create, manage, and uh, deploy digital content in a flex in, in a uh, digital content with the flexibility of the cloud technologies. Also, being a cloud platform, it takes the full responsibility for the handling the hosting, uh, maintenance, hosting infrastructure and software updates. And so actually, as well as the scalability and the performance of the platform itself. For sure, uh, we as, a, as, as a implementers, we are still uh, responsible for the performance of the application that we run in XM Cloud, but the platform itself are managed by the pro platform owner. Um, XM Cloud provides a good and a list of good tools, and one of them is uh, uh, deploy, a site core deploy tool, which allows us to simplify the process of the deployments of the uh, deployments applications to to the uh, to the platform. And uh, the last thing it is. A headless CMS, which means that uh, we have to implement our own rendering host. And we're also responsible to host it ourselves. And there is a, uh, a number of different ways how we uh, where we can host it. And want it it is actually can be hosted in in on some on-premise server, which is not make sense if you use the cloud platform on the back end. So another option is uh, some kind of uh, serverless platforms like uh, Netlify or Vercel. And uh, actually Vercel is the mm, is the platform which is uh, uh, an, uh, a partner of the site core and uh, we have a good experience to work with it. And today we will talking about like, the Vercel itself. And what is the Versal? Versal is a cloud platform that enables developers to deploy, manage, and scale web applications easily. Uh, basically, this is very popular hosting for the Next.js applications because the company which is on, which is stay behind the Versal is also creator of the Next.js. Uh, but anyway, Versal supports a different front-end frameworks and static site generation mechanisms, making a, that platform universal. Uh, first of all, this is the server, uh, server serverless uh, platform, and it has the serverless functions, uh, provides, which provides uh, a capabilities allowing uh, to develop, develop developers to run backend code without managing a se separate server. 
uh, it is the CDN content de content delivery network, uh, which uh, ensures that our website, our application, uh, fast and responsive, regardless of where the user is located. So the, it distributed to different uh, countries, regions, etc. Um, actually, the Versal is optimized for front-end frameworks. And uh, as I said, it is pretty much good platform for the to run the Next.js, but it also means that uh, we can run any other applications built on ba based on running applications, which is based on the React, Vue.js, or Angular, for example. Um, Versal is a cloud based platform and it is the SaaS platform and which means that uh, uh, Verstal are itself are responsible for the scaling the application. You don't need to think about it as a as a user of the platform. And also Verstal provides pretty good analytics uh, where we can see all metrics related to the, our website, uh, visitors and Cetera. So it is pretty, looks like uh, Google Analytics, but it is collected in a bit different way in the hosts in uh, Versal. <clears throat> Before we will go to the further slides related to the multi-site solution architecture, I uh, just want to say a few words about the, uh, about the multi-site requirements coming from our clients. So based on my experience, almost all clients request to build a multi-site just because probably Sitecore, it, it, it is comes from the origin of Sitecore itself because uh, Sitecore uh, targeting the middle or even uh, enterprise level of clients and uh, uh, which means that it's quite large corporates that have probably different multiple brands or it is represented in uh, different countries, which means that they always want to have multiple sites depending on the business needs, but uh, it is pretty common requirement. We face it every time when we start the project. Uh, so let's go further with the first slide. Um, which I call like a regular view of the multi-site application. Uh, it is pretty common case of multi-site, even it is XM Cloud or Sitecore Experience Platform, or because uh, it represents the case when we have uh, three websites. Okay, all my slides will be based on the similar number of the websites. Uh, actually, let's say we have alpha, beta, gamma websites represented in Vercel, and we have, uh, let's call apps, and we have uh, three sites created in XM Cloud. So um, each our website in this diagram has own code base, uh, which requires separate deployment to the Vercel because uh, they have different uh, they can have different folder or even different uh, repositories it doesn't matter but uh, the main idea that we have three different code base for each of our website um, we have the authoring repository or authoring solid uh, project uh, which has the customizations and extensions for the site core and cloud in our case and we have uh, editing hosts running in XM Cloud, which means that we also need to deploy our front end apps to the site core as an editing host. Uh, just want to be noticed that we can deploy uh, each application separately to the Vercel, but uh, in XM Cloud, we only have an option to deploy all together. So we cannot even deploy the uh, editing host separately. So this, we only have one bundle of uh, artifacts that we push to the XM Cloud and build happen for everything together. Um, also, I want to mention that talk, if we're talking about XM Cloud, we also need to take into account that it has site core age or experience age platform it kind of exists separately from the xm cloud but it is always considering as a part of it 
And uh, in exam cloud world, we can con uh, consider the age as a web database as it was previously, as it was called previously uh, when we was working with the on-prem side core solutions because we actually do the publish to the site core experience age and our applications consume the content from from the age so uh, in my diagram i also put some uh, labels like what we actually use to request the content from the uh, from the age so and one of the parameters is that in the last, latest version of the xm cloud it is the content id a context ID, sorry, uh, which can have two values. Uh, this one value for the life, uh, which means that we will retrieve the content that we published, or another value which will be matched to the uh, to the preview content. And the preview content is a content that comes from the master database. I will talk about that a bit later in more details and uh, show the diagram, which will explain how it actually works. So I think we can go further with uh, the next slide. <clears throat> and this slide is pretty similar, but uh, in that case, we use our Vercel apps as an external editing host for our uh, sites running in the XM Cloud. Uh, even editing host actually means that uh, this is the code and, or this is the app which will be used to to render content for our pages tool or for the experience editor and uh, when we use the Vercel app the, the apps running in the Vercel as ex editing host we have to introduce to actually it each application uh, which application that we run in the Vercel they are based on the set core SXA starter kit, which in the same time has uh, editing endpoint, which is used to render uh, the markup, markup for editing tools for pages or experience editor, as I said before. Um, one more scene coming in in the diagram which is Redis. It is required to to make uh, the pages tool working correctly uh, with the external editing host running in the Vercel. Uh, this is the requirement from the site core and uh, it is not really difficult to configure. There is an article provided by site core where you can see how to do that. Uh, I will share the link later. Uh, the Vercel also has the own uh, provider for, for the Redis, but uh, for some kind of uh, uh, for Okay, for the enterprise account, it doesn't available. Uh, so, and we have to run the ready somewhere uh, else. Uh, and everything else is the same. We have three different repositories, three different deployments to the Vercel. And in that case, we have only one thing that we deploy to the XM Cloud is the backend code, let's say backend customizations only. Um, the next slide. Uh, the next slide slide has a different approach uh, because now we use the same we still have the same three websites as before but now they all have the same code base and uh, on the Vercel we have only one app but with uh, multi-sided done running on it so the multi-site add-on is an out-of-the-box tool provided by site, site core with the sxa starter kit application and we can use it to resolve the site based on the uh, host names assigned to sites in xm cloud so when we build our application universal or just locally it makes a request to to the xm cloud GraphQL endpoint and retrieve all websites, the list of all websites that we have at XM Cloud with the host names assigned to each of them. Uh, then the application put it to the temp config JSON file, and uh, then each on each request it compare uh, the host name from the region with the uh, 
uh, the, the list of host names or the, the, the list of sites that we have in, in our web con in the JSON config, resolve and try to find the corresponding site. And once it is found, it just send the request. It, it, it application put the site name to the request of the age. So uh, this is how it works with um, multi-site add-on and we so. uh, We still can use editing host. Uh, we can still we still can use this application as an external editing host. Um, each site should have uh, set to be set in to have to be configured uh, to use the application with its own host name. So we use the when we try to reach the editing host in uh, editing API and point in our application, we should uh, use the corresponding host assigned to, to, to the website uh, to allow again the to allow this application to resolve the correct site. So in that case, we can deploy all three websites together in one uh, uh, in all three websites together in the same time, and we cannot separate the deployments for for some of them. Uh, the next case when we still use the multi-site add-on running in the worst cell, <clears throat> we have only one repository, so all our sites use the same code base, but we want to use the uh, internal editing host running in the XM cloud. In that case, we even if we even have one application running in Vercel, we have to deploy three separate editing hosts with the same code in our XM cloud. So because XM cloud only allow us to have the editing host per site. So we cannot use one for all of them. Um, this is only the difference. We only in this case, the, the time of deployment to the XM Cloud will be increased, but yes, that's still the, an option. And uh, uh, okay, and uh, we don't need the Redis cache for, for this approach, using this approach when we run the editing host inside of the XM Cloud. It's, I will correct my, I will correct my slide later on. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> Probably last slide relating to the architecture of the multi-site solutions. Uh, this is the case when we have still the same code base for each of the websites, but uh, we deploy them separately and we run three different websites inside of the Vercel. So it, yes, we have the same code base and uh, probably we can use one only one pipeline to deploy all of them together, but sometimes it is better to have an option to deploy them separately, even they have the use, they use the same code. And again, we can use uh, the editing host, external them as an external editing host. So the, all of them should be configured separately for sure. Uh, the gamma, the editing host for gamma is just an example. Three of them should be configured to use versus the editing host. Uh, so yeah, the, the number of the, the, the fact that we can deploy up separately is uh, make this uh, difference for this diagram. And uh, we will compare why uh, it is better or not to have uh, three different apps running in Vercel, even if we have the same code base. Now the time when I'm going to explain the context ID uh, parameter or environment variable. Uh, this is quite new change. It's a new thing introduced in the XM Cloud. So for me, it was new. Actually, I have not been working with XM Cloud for some time, but uh, I mentioned it a few probably months ago, maybe two months ago, that there is some context ID exists in the XSM cloud, and I'm just trying to figure out what is it and how it works. It was not so, uh, it is 
actually clear from the description uh, in a sidecar documentation, but uh, it does not explain in details how it actually works and how we can test it. So uh, <clears throat> now each our uh, application, which is based on the sidecar SXA starter kit, has the environment variable calling the Linux sidecore age context ID. And as I said before, it can have two values. Uh, one for the for the live content, and one for the preview. And when we, like for example, put the 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 ID of like live context ID, so and do the request to the sidecore experience age, it will check if if this ID match to the to the live, and if yes, it just respond the content from the storage of the of of age. It works like uh, as expected when we retrieve the content from uh, from from the web database. But if we want to use uh, the date, the, the but the preview, uh, which means that we want to get the content from the master database. And previously, before the context ID stuff was introduced, we had to we had to do the request directly to the CM server uh, to the preview a uh, GraphQL endpoint to get this content. Uh, that was not so good for me because we always need to introduce the sidecore CM server hostname somewhere in our application or in some variables and or so. That uh, means that the we have to share actually the CM server ID, uh, CM server hostname. But with this context ID stuff, we can set the value of the context ID as a for the preview and the in sending the request to the age age identifier that this is preview this is not live at least and if it is uh, just uh, some wrong value it will back us the 44 request uh, response but if it identifies that it is preview ID it just proxy the request to the sidecore CM and respond us uh, the content from the master database so from from the application point of view we just change the value of the ID and uh, the the age do everything else for us identifying which content we uh, try to request uh, <clears throat> that was sounds simple, but uh, I tried to test it actually with the GraphQL playground, and uh, I was not able to manage it to to make it work because it was always failed. Uh, I tried to put different par in the parameters in different ways, so I tried to put it to the as a query string, as a HTTP headers. Uh, nothing that it doesn't work in that way. So maybe I did something wrong. Maybe it shouldn't work in that way. But uh, I still want to figure out how I can test it. And uh, I found another way. So I just use the postman uh, and do actually the post request to the to the age platform uh, URL with the sidecore context ID added as a query string and put my query. Uh, in the GraphQL body field. So then in that case, it works. And the last uh, screen just shows that where you can find this context ID. Uh, in Sidecore Cloud Deploy tool uh, in in the project, you uh, in the for the each project you have own own uh, values for the context ID. Just uh, for example, in my case, this is the staging staging environment and for the staging environment I have two uh, two values one for the preview and one for the live <clears throat> uh, now let's have a look at uh, some pros and codes to use a uh, multi multiple application running in Versal or use the standalone app for all websites and uh, first of all uh, using multiple applications, we can do the separate deployment. Oh, yes, we can do the separate deployments for sure, and we can actually do the parallel builds and deployments in the same time, which can increase the num the time of the deployments. But from another side, uh, doing that uh, the the parallel deployments, we can reach the the limit of the age rate. So, which means that uh, experience age have some 
limit of request that it can handle in the same time and in, in a parallel. So this is the uh, the backside of the parallel deployments. Um, uh, the the next pros that we can deploy uh, sites separately. For example, if we we have different brands, and uh, the the front end part of one, uh, and we change some code, and one brand is ready to to get the latest uh, stuff, and another brand maybe are. Uh, are managed by another business team are not ready so then we can deploy only one site and then later on when the next that when the second team will be ready we can deploy another one uh, it is kind of uh, since when we can proceed the canary deployments for example uh, if you want to test uh, our fun new functionality better we can deploy it on the one region only and once it works perfectly uh, with one region, you can deploy to the rest. Or we can produce some A-B testing somehow. Uh, this is the, just an idea what we can do there is multiple apps running in Vercel. And uh, again, if we deploy the single standalone application, it means that we have to regenerate all uh, regenerate all pages for all websites and if you have a lot of content on which website it can take to generate it and uh, definitely it can increase your build time for sure uh, <clears throat> okay uh, let's go further uh, from the performance point of view when we run each website as a separate applications, this is how usually we deploy the Next.js application. So <clears throat> each app, each site have own uh, application. Not, nothing custom here, it is uh, like default behavior. But when we use the multi-site add-on running in our Next.js application, it means that on each request, we have to figure out from which host the, the, the request goes from. We have to uh, resolve the current website that we that we tried to request and uh, do some uh, rewrites for for the request that which we sent to the to the uh, age it can affect the performance a bit so it, it doesn't mean that it will affect for sure but in some cases it it can so then we need just to be uh, careful and uh, check if how it actually works and measure the performance mm. <clears throat> uh, one Another thing related to the Next.js. So uh, with multiple applications running in Vercel, we can introduce the uh, separate 44 and 500 error pages for each website. But uh, with the standalone applications, we can only have uh, the common 44 and 500 pages for each of our websites and applications running in Vercel in the standalone mode. Uh, <clears throat> Again, uh, if you have the separate applications running in the in Vercel, then you can collect and uh, Vercel will collect actually the analytics per your website in more curate way because uh, each your application has own uh, analytics and uh, then then it is will be presented in more convenient way. So, but. I'm pretty sure that you can also collect the analytics in the, if you if you run the standalone applications based on maybe some rules and filtering you will be able to reach the required analytics and you will be also able you will be able to to see the analytics too per site in case of the standalone but for me it will be more difficult or probably not so uh, accurate uh, <clears throat> now let's have a look to the multi-site architecture from the deployment point of view, from the deployment strategy point of view. And uh, uh, as I said before, Sitecore provides us the, tool, the deploy tool that we can use to deploy our application to the XM cloud, as well as the Vercel has own uh, own build and deploy process, which is works pretty similar as an XM cloud. All of them use just uh, push webhook. And when we proceed, uh, when we and push the code to their repository if it or even it is github or another storage it will run the deployment in the each tool uh, this is how actually we are 
can use, uh, the, how we can deploy the application. And maybe if you have one website uh, inside in Inversal or standalone website, then you have a few websites in the in in XM Cloud. You have one repository for both from the back end and the front end. Then it might work because uh, so you will be synced uh, within the changes on front end and the back end in the same time and in kind of safe safety. But if we, for example, have the separate repository for front end or our story and you proceed uh, deployment separately and you will do that because uh, you will push separately to the front end and for the authoring which will run corresponding builds on each side then uh, you in some cases you can got some problems because uh, the your authoring or XM cloud let's say will be deployed and front end not or uh, or otherwise so <clears throat> Uh, in that case, you still can, but you be, should be uh, carefully uh, track what and when you deploy to to each to each side. Um, but again, this is for me. It is for pretty simple cases because uh, this is how deployments looks for the real client of us, where we have not only the Site sites running in Versal. We also have uh, a content hub. We have the order cloud. We have some uh, APIs running in the Azure, and we have to deploy all together time to time, or some separate sites for Versal. And uh, each of these uh, parties has own uh, staging or production states in the promotion, and the, Using the automatic deployments provided of each of these tool uh, makes the scenes a bit difficult because you cannot track what what is deployed and where. So in that case, we usually uh, take control of the deployments with our custom pipelines. Uh, in most cases, we use the uh, uh, native CLI tools provided of each to of each platform like uh, XM Cloud CLI or Vercel CLI to proceed the build and deployment. And finally, deployment happens with the tools running in the Vercel or XM Cloud, but we try to keep it under the control where we deploy and what we deploy in time. So uh, for example, we for the Vercel, we can deploy all sites where we actually have 30, 30 uh, storefronts and uh, at least three uh, well, for the B2C, or and we have three storefronts uh, for the B2B, and uh, that yeah. means that we have a lot of options to deploy uh, them separately. And for sure, we separate them from, from brands. So brand one have uh, like 10 countries, brand two have another 15 countries, and that, that all different websites in our Vercel. But uh, we have the all button for each brand when we can deploy the whole science for for the one brand, or even we have the all button to deploy everything together in the Versal. And uh, I haven't put it here in the diagram, but we also have the pipeline which deploy all parties in the same time. But it is it happens all always under our control, and we can which version of code we deploy and where. Uh, just a few last things. Uh, tips to how to how to configure uh, certain things in, in multi-site. So in, in case of the external host, each of your website have to be configured to use the uh, external app running somewhere. So then it is not really required to be Vercel. Uh, but in my, my case, this is Vercel and we put the host, which will point us to the Vercel app running, the, to the app running in the Vercel. Uh, the next thing, then you have to specify uh, the edit GSS editing secret. Uh, usually, it, hap it it is done by um, patching the config. The value can be any. There can be any value, but make sure that your GSS editing secret has the same value, the same environment variable, uh, the value for the the same environment variable in your application in in Vercel or even in dot .n file. Uh, and no, don't forget to configure 
uh, out of the process ed uh, editing data cache. Uh, the link I just put on the screen. If, if, if somebody need this link, I can send it to the chat. So uh, for the editing host running in the XM cloud, you have to specify the, the rendering host. It, it is called rendering, but actually it is editing. In, in the XM cloud deploy config, and the, in my case, I have three, the same, uh, the same JSON uh, snippets are added to the config, even if point, even it is pointing the same uh, folder. But we have to deploy it three times if we want to use it for each our website for alpha, gamma, beta, gamma, and the name of the uh, no. These nodes should be the same as you have as your website. And uh, I think I'm pretty it so. Thank you for the attention and